Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's How to Apply to College information session. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules to join us tonight. This is a very important session for those students that, that are graduating this year and who are considering different programs to apply to. Colleges offer degrees, diplomas, certificates, and also um, apprenticeship programs. So we will be going over um, the application process tonight. Before we start, we're gonna start with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the An Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. We have set in guidance, we have set uh, guidance Google Classrooms uh, for each different grade level. This is the guidance Google Classroom code for our grade 12s. We encourage everyone to join if they haven't had an opportunity to already, because we do post important information throughout the year. This is actually, this code is posted also outside the classroom. Uh, outside the um, guidance classroom, which is uh, located across room 103. At Northview, we have four guidance counselors. Uh, I'm Ms. Tanwi Kulu. I look after students whose last names begin from A to G. I'm Mr. Bruda, and I deal with last names H to M and international students A to M. And I'm Ms. Havoc Trias, and I am last names RB through Z, and international students N through Z. Yeah. And Ms. Allison is, takes care of students whose last names begin from N to RA, and also our APCA and ISP and AST program students. And she was, she's unable to make it this evening. She sends her regrets. We encourage all students to uh, visit our guidance office to come down and book an appointment. So as soon as one enters the guidance office, to their right, they will see an appointment binder with all of our names. The point binder looks like that and the appointment sheets look like this. So as you can see, it has each counselor's name, it has the date, and it also has time slots in the different periods in which guidance counselors are available. And what students need to do is they can come down. There'll be a week's worth of uh, appointment slips put in every Friday, and they can come down and take a look at which day is suitable for them and put down their name and their guidance counselor will call them down from that period. We encourage all students to book appointments and discuss their post-secondary plans with their guidance counselor. On the guidance, in the guidance Google Classroom, we do, uh, we have posted the OCAS or Ontario College Application Systems timeline for 2022-23. Um, in, so uh, February 1st is the deadline, is the deadline in which uh, students can apply to college. Uh, we did have a how to apply to um, college and set up your account uh, information session for some of our grade 12 students who were able to make it. So some of our students have actually set, the, set up their accounts and uh, they're fine tuning their, the, the programs that they want to apply to. Um, it's very important that everybody has, um, all the students that are applying do have a professional email address with, which Ms. Pavlik Trias will be going into during the um, setting up the account uh, part. And um, it's very important that students check that particular email on a regular basis because that is how the colleges will be um, communicating with the students. Uh, traditionally, uh, May 1st, uh, May 1st is a deadline to confirm offers of admission. So read the letters. Uh, particular programs may have an earlier acceptance date. So when you receive information from the colleges, read the letters very, very carefully. But for majority of the programs, uh, all students will hear before May 1st, and May 1st is the deadline to pick the one program that they wanna attend in September. 
In grade 11 and 12, uh, courses are offered at the U or university, mixed, um, M for mixed, and C for a uh, college, uh, college level. So the, the colleges, uh, for the degree programs in the colleges, uh, they do, students do have to have six grade 12 U or M courses, including the ENG for U, uh, just um, like they would have to have when they're applying to university. So they are degree programs and six grade 12 U or M courses are required. For the other course, for um, traditionally for the diploma programs, you, uh, colleges will look at U, M, and C courses. And they will use these in the calculation of their average. Recently, uh, um, students who will be, uh, our potential graduate information was sent to OCAS, uh, demographic information, uh, and a list of grade 11 courses and the courses that they're taking this year has been sent. We are now using the program PowerSchool, and this is called the Ontario Student Status Card, whereas traditionally it, was, traditionally it was called the Credit Counseling Summary. This is a summary of all the courses that a student has taken during their high school year. Um, you will see that for high school diploma, it is very important that students realize that they do need 30 credits to graduate, and the area in the red indicates the number of courses that the student has earned. You can also see at the very bottom when you see credits to date, the 23 means the, the number of credits that the student has earned to date. And if they, get, or if they pass every course on their timetable, the 31 indicates the number of credits they will have by the end of the school year in June. Another requirement is the community involvement hours. All students are required to complete 40 uh, volunteer hours. And in order to help our students find organizations within our community, like charitable organizations, we do we have we organize two volunteer fairs throughout the year, one in the fall, one in the spring. Our first fall volunteer fair will be on next week, Wednesday, November 16, and it'll take place at lunch in the front foyer. So if there are any students that are still looking to um, gain more volunteer hours, please join us on November 16 in the front foyer. And there will be about 10 community organizations uh, that you can speak to and sign up right away. Another and the third um, requirement for the Ontario Secondary School Diploma is successful passing of the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test. All students in grade 10 uh, wrote this test. So students in grade 10 have to write this test. If it's ESL students, they may have written it a little early, uh, later. However, all students must pass this test in order to, for as successful completion of their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Please note that any course that is passed twice will earn the credit once. So if a student had taken a course and they want to take it again and they passed it and they want to upgrade because a particular program required a minimum amount, minimum percentage for entry requirements, please note that a second credit for a past course will not be given. We encourage all students to book appointments with their guidance counselor to check their Ontario student status card to make sure that they are on track to graduate. And now, next, I'll be passing it on to Mr. Bruda, who will go over how to research college programs. All right. Thank you, Ms. Tanner Koo. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, we'll be looking at the grade 12 search and apply to college worksheets. So these are found, I actually have a physical one. I know you're not gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna get go off camera when I speak, but you can find these large sheets um, underneath the appointment binder in guidance. So right when you come in, like you were would to sign to see a guidance counselor, just underneath there, you can find lots of these blank sheets for grade 12 search and apply to college worksheets. I'm gonna go off camera and I'm just gonna discuss just really briefly each little category and each column so you have a better understanding of what we're, what's what the, what you're looking for when you actually re, uh, do some research. So on the uh, farthest left hand, that's where you're gonna put the college names. That one's pretty straightforward. Some of the most popular ones are Centennial, George Brown, Humber, Seneca, and Sheridan. Those are the ones that are roughly around the area in the GTA. In the second column, you'll see program name. 
And that little fine print just says to go to ontariocolleges.ca, which I have, we have a lot of screenshots that we're going to be showing you here. But when you go there, you can do a program search. You can either enter the search word or choose a program. And then once you do that, you can actually start setting filters. And it's really important that we talk about some of those filters. And in that little section there, you'll see that we talk about a start date. You really want to focus on a start date that is for the fall 2023-2024 school year. Um, the language of instruction, you should consider putting English because uh, obviously there are other schools that are in French and other languages. There's program levels and you really want, you, you should be choosing the filter of post-secondary because you are leaving high school. So right after high school is called post-secondary. Um, a lot of college programs do offer postgraduate programs and those are for people who already have a diploma or a degree at that point. So you don't want to choose those ones, choose post-secondary. And you obviously also want to choose the program delivery of full time so that you can complete your diploma or degree program um, as, as fast as possible. Okay, in the third column, you'll see credentials. And there's a variety of different credentials you could be looking forward to. You could be looking to get a certificate, which is usually a one year program. Some of them are diplomas that you get from college, which are two year programs. There's advanced diplomas, which are three year programs. And some colleges even offer degree programs. And like Ms. Sandra Kulu said, if you decide to do a degree program through a college or a university, you do require that you have to have, like you have to have six courses that have a 4U or a 4M in the course code. In the fourth column, you have the OCAS program code, which you will see right underneath that information. Once you look up a particular program, it'll have a program code with OCAS. In the next big column, that's the brief program description. Where is the uh, campus? What do you like about it? What co-opportunities does it have? What career opportunities are there? Is it competitive? If so, what average do you need? It's really important that you search these up, do your research, view virtual college tours in Ontario. And um, we have posted in Guidance Google Classroom as well as outside of the Guidance Office, a list of dates in schools of when they actually have full fall and spring open houses. And we really recommend that you do go and visit them so you get a feel of the campus. And that really does give you that vibe that you're looking for that if it feels right, it probably is right. And that might be a choice for you if you really enjoy the school. And then the second last column on the right is the admission requirements. As we know, schools require certain courses that you need to get into their school. So sometimes you'll need, an, oh, that's my dog, sorry about that, uh, and the grade 12 English class, a 4C Alexis, college. did you put it in the oven yet? Um, you will also need your 4C math sometimes for depending on the program. Uh, if you're an international student, we also have links there for students that are international, visa students. And on the last section, you have list any other entrance requirements. So sometimes programs require portfolios, uh, supplementary application forms, interviews, language requirements, you name it. It's really important that you take a look at what the additional requirements are for each program. On the back of that sheet, you'll actually see, and I, you know, I have a, it's much larger when you get it in person, but you can put your username, your password. Once you apply to OCAS, you'll get an application number. And um, on that Ontario student status sheet that we handed out to all students, um, you can also get it from your guidance counselor. Uh, on the Ontario student status, there is an OEN number, your Ontario education number. You need that to apply to college. And as you see on the bottom here, there's a huge checklist. It's really important that you do go over that checklist that you have checked all that off so you know that you've done a successful application. Uh, on the next slide, yeah, that's fine. Um, that is the ontariocolleges.ca website. As you can see where it says click on programs, that's where you can start searching for programs that may be of interest to you. And here's where you can search by keyword or by a category. So there's a little section there, program search and or category. You. We're going to choose one for an example. I think we're going to choose nursing because nursing is a huge and very popular industry right now. As we know, with the pandemic, many people are trying to enter that as well as get a job. And that's probably a really highly competitive area, but also a high need area for Ontario. So you'll click on health, food, and medical, and then you'll find nursing right there. Okay. And this page here tells you everything you need to know about that in industry itself. So what to expect. What kind of, what, what, what does a career in nursing look like? What programs are available? What schools offer a nursing program? And any other information you may need. It's like a stop all area for you to learn everything about that particular program. On this page, you see all the programs that apply to nursing. So like I was saying on the left-hand side there, 
you'll see all the different filters, right? And here we go. So you can narrow your search by program start date. So August, 2023 start date, you can get the program, right? The credentials, degree programs are joint university college programs and have the same admission requirements as other university programs. And I think this one's gonna talk about the program level, level, which is what you need to also filter by, as I mentioned, because you're looking for post-secondary programs. And if you want to learn more about a particular college of interest to you, just click on the little blue hyperlink there that says website. It'll take you to the college website where you can learn everything you need to know about it. So the prerequisites, go and visit the site, and just learn more about it. And I'm going to pass it on to Ms. BT. Okay, so I'm going to go over the actual application process. Um, it is a, a bit of a longer process in that when we send your information to OCAS from the school, it does not include your demographic information. So all of that um, stuff is things that you will need to enter along the way as you apply. So you actually apply to college using the same website that you use to just complete your research, except now you're going to click on the big apply now in the middle, which will then take you to this page. If you well, are my apologies, Miss Pavlik Trias. Just to just to let you know, Miss Pavlik Trias is going to go into detail about how to set up your account. But this session is being recorded. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, and it will be posted on NorthviewHeights.ca under post secondary programs for you to review later. Sorry for the interruption, Miss Pavlik Trias. Okay, so once we get to uh, hitting the apply now button, it's then going to take you to the screen where it will ask you whether you are a Canadian applicant or an international applicant. All students that have status in Canada, whether it's a permanent resident, Canadian citizen, refugee, are considered Canadian applicants. Students that are currently paying to attend school in TDSB, so if you're paying tuition to attend Northview, you are considered an international applicant and you need to use the international applicant portal. I'm going to just go over that portal very quickly because it is very different. So if you are an international applicant, you will go into the portal, but you do actually have to apply to every college that you are interested in separately. And there will be a separate application fee for each college that you choose. So the portal really just takes you to uh, the site that gives you the links to the colleges, but you will, as an international student, have to apply to each of those separately. For most students, however, the Canadian Applicant Portal is what you will use to apply. You select the Apply Now, and it's going to ask you to create an account. So you need to put your legal first name and your legal last name. Now, this is the name that you have either on your birth certificate or your passport or any other official government issued document. It's not necessarily exactly the name that we have for you at Northview. Some students do go by a shorter nickname, for example, than their legal first name. But when you're applying to college, you have to use that legal first and last name. Otherwise, it will cause errors in your application. You then want to have to get enter the email address that you want the colleges to contact you through. We recommend that you do not use your TDSB email address because after you graduate in June, that address, will, you will no longer be able to access your TDSB account. So if the colleges send you any information over the summer and you've given your TDSB email, you won't actually be able to receive that message from them. So please make sure that you use a clean, professional, personal email um, for your communications with the colleges. And then it will ask you to set up and confirm your password. The next thing that it goes over when you're creating the account is the three security questions. So it's going to ask you to pick three questions and submit an answer to those in case you need to use the automatic password reset option that they have. I recommend that students take a screenshot of the security questions that they have chosen and the answers that they have provided. Because if you even put a capital in your answer when you didn't in the original that you typed it in, it will consider it an error and not the correct answer. So take a screenshot of the question that you chose and the exact way that you answered that question. 
It'll then confirm your registration by sending you an email to whichever email address you provided on the first screen. From that email, you'll then uh, confirm that that is you and that that is the email that you're using and you have the option to log in directly from that email. Or if you're not quite ready to apply to college yet, you can then go back to the main screen, use the login option this time, either at the top of the screen or below the apply now button to begin your application. After you select the login option, it is going to once again, take you back to this portal to ask you which kind of application you are logging into. And from that, you select the apply now and login option, and it will take you to your account. It then asks you for the email and the password that you created so that you can start the application. The first thing that it's going to look at is reviewing the information that you gave it when you created the account. So this is your chance to change or make any corrections if you did something incorrectly in the first place. But again, legal first name, legal last name is required. And also make sure that you are correctly entering your date of birth. Uh, we have had instances where students have incorrectly entered their date of birth, probably by accident. And then it causes errors uh, when Northview is trying to communicate with the colleges to send them your grades and transcripts, et cetera. So make sure that that information is accurate. And then you will continue. You have to accept their privacy policy. And you also have to accept their communication preferences. Uh, the communication preference for college is electronic communication or email. From there, you will begin the two parts of the application. The first part being the personal information section. In that section, you will have to enter all of the information on uh, the screen that, that is provided. Um, I only have the top part of the screen on, visible here for you, but as you continue to scroll down, it is going to ask you for your address. Um, it's going to ask you to what your preferences are in terms of who the college can communicate with and all of that information needs to be entered accurately. I just want to highlight the very last question on the personal information screen and that is the sponsorship question. We do get students that are confused as to what sponsorship means exactly. Uh, sponsorship is for when a company is usually sponsoring an employee to go back to college to upgrade their skills. It is not a bursary and it is not a scholarship. So for high school students, the answer to this question is always no sponsorship. After you've completed the personal information section, you then move on to the next part, which is linking your educational experience to your application. On this uh, page, it's gonna first ask you if you are currently enrolled in a high school course. Of course, the answer is yes, you're currently attending high school. And then it will ask for your anticipated graduation date. For most of our students, that will be June, 2023. If you're only here for one semester, then your graduation uh, date is January, 2023. On the next screen, it's going to ask you to enter all of the Canadian high school education that you have. So you will uh, find Northview under the school name. It's then going to ask you when you attended Northview from. If you were born in 2005 and you started at Northview in grade nine, then you started with us in September 2019. If you were born in 2004 and you have been at Northview since grade nine, you started with us in September of 2018. If Northview is uh, your second or third school that you have attended, you will have to adjust these dates according to what year you entered Northview. And you will also have to add any other high schools in Ontario that you attended to your uh, Canadian high school education part here. Uh, at this point, you have to also enter your OEN number, which is found on um, your data sheet that we showed at the beginning. And if you're unsure of this number, you, you can come down to guidance and ask your guidance counselor. Please note that your OEN number is not your TDSB student number. It is the number that is assigned to you by the Ministry of Education 
and that follows you regardless of which school board uh, you attend. So make sure you are entering your OEN number in this section and not your uh, TDSB student number. The section under will ask you for your TDSB student number. So you could go ahead and uh, enter that as well. If, as I was saying previously, if Northview is not the only school that you have attended, you will have to select the add another option here and enter any Ontario high schools um, that you have attended besides Northview Heights. Once you have completed that, your profile portion is complete and you're ready to move on to the next part of the application, which is actually selecting your programs. It's going to ask you when you'd like to go to college. All of our students, regardless of whether or not they're graduating in January or in um, June, are going to most likely be starting after July 31st, 2023. So make sure that you select that. And then you come to the actual application portion of um, this section. Here you can put in the program code if you don't, if you did write it down as Mr. Bruda suggested on your research sheet. By entering the exact code, it will take you directly to that program. If you didn't uh, write down the code, you can do a search just like you did in the research to find that program code. If you printed in practical nursing, for example, at all of the colleges, all of the practical nursing programs in Ontario will then appear and you'll be able to find the program that you were looking for and select the add button. Uh, one thing that I do want to draw to everyone's attention because this is important, colleges, unlike universities, actually have three intake dates. So you can start in September, you can start in January, and you can also, in some cases, start in May. So before you go ahead and add the program to your application, make sure you have selected the correct start date as it applies to you. You will then repeat this process four more times for a total of five programs. Only three programs can be at the same college, and there is a $110 fee to apply to five programs. Whether or not you apply to three or five, you will be charged the same $110 fee. So we do recommend that all students apply to five programs, even if you only really want to get into your top three, for example. On this page, you also have the option of ordering the programs from the program that you want the most, number one, to the program that is your uh, least favorite or that you would least like to attend. The colleges do tell us that they do not use your ranking of their program in their admission consideration, that the rankings are only used for uh, data collection purposes to see how students are making their choices. At the very, very bottom, you'll, you'll scroll down to the end and select the save and continue to move on to the next screen. This screen shows you the transcripts that are being ordered on your behalf. If you have entered your education correctly in the first uh, part of the application, then you should see that Northview Heights appears and it's showing that it's going to send your, your transcripts to all of the colleges that you've applied to. Any other schools that you have listed in this section, if for example, you started at Newton Brook in grade nine, those should also appear on this screen and have the same arrow showing that your transcript is going to all of the colleges you've applied to. You then save and continue to take you to the next screen. On this screen, this is where you get to review all the information that you have submitted on all parts of the application. It is really important that you don't just scroll through this screen quickly, that you actually take some time to read that you have entered everything correctly, your address, your birth date, your citizenship information, your high school information, et cetera. Because once you continue on to the payment screen, you will not be able to go back and make changes to, the, to your application without directly contacting OCAS. 
The other thing to keep in mind in terms of your password and your username that you created for your application, guidance does not have access to this information. So any questions that you have about your application, um, if you forget your username or your password or anything like that, if you've made an error in your birth date, for example, once you go past the screen, you have to contact OCAS and work with them directly to resolve the issue. Guidance is not able to do so on your behalf. Once you are confident that everything is correct, you can move to the next part, which is paying the fee. Um, it will then show you the programs that you have applied to. You. you have another chance to double check that you've selected the correct start date, and then you can move on to paying your outstanding fees. The colleges do prefer that you pay by credit card. So uh, if you don't have a credit card yourself, if there's a family member or a friend or someone else that you can ask to borrow their credit card, your application is processed much more quickly when it is done by credit card. For the last part here, because we know that students are not necessarily used to using credit cards, it's asking for something called a card security code. Um, that's sometimes also called a CDS. And this code is actually located on the back of the credit card. It's three digits, and it's normally located at the end of the signature bar of that card. Once you've entered all the information, you can go ahead and process your payment, and then your application is complete. Please note that until you pay, your application is not sent to your colleges of choice. So it's going to just be held at the application center until they receive confirmation of payment, at which point your application is sent out to the programs that you have selected. Um, just to review, it's $110 for five program choices. None of those can be more than three at any one college. So you can't pick five uh, George Brown programs, for example. You have a maximum of three. All of the choices that you make have to start within the same academic year. And remember that your username is permanent and you cannot change it. So make sure that when you are first setting up your account that you do select a username that you will be able to remember. If you have been at um, Northview for less than four years, so if you came uh, in your grade 10 or 11 year from another country, you may be asked to complete a English proficiency test. Um, the colleges will usually accept TOEFL or IELTS, or in some cases, they will even have their own local test that they will ask you to write, but they will indicate that when they send you your uh, confirmation of application email. So each of the colleges should confirm that they received your application, and in that confirmation email, they will give you any further instructions uh, having to do with your application, including your English proficiency and whether or not it is required. For most students, as long as you have been studying in an English speaking high school for three or more years, uh, this English proficiency is waived. As Mr. Bruda mentioned, there are many open houses and campus tours, and we highly recommend that all students attend those. You can find more information about those in our Google Classroom or posted in guidance. And the last thing uh, that I want to go over is uh, the IEP. So if you're a student that currently has an individual education plan or IEP, you are eligible to continue to receive the same accommodations at the post-secondary level. However, you will not automatically receive those accommodations. Once you have uh, confirmed an offer and selected the college and program that you want to attend, you will need to contact that college's accessibility office directly, set up an appointment with them, and they will guide you further as to what you need uh, to have your accommodations transferred to the post-secondary level. At this point, I'm going to turn it uh, out to the floor for any questions. Uh, Mr. Bruda, was there anything in the chat that you wanted to quickly summarize? There's uh, nothing in the chat.
So if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat or raise your hand and uh, unmute, and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Looks like we have a question from, uh, is this an iPhone? They put their hand up. Yeah. So um, as mentioned, one of the questions is, how do I decide if I want to go to college or university? And the other question is, can I apply for both college and university? For the first question, how do I decide if I want to go to college or university? Research is the key, you know, because research will allow you to understand the types of programs that are available to you. It'll allow you to be able to read about the programs and see if it is a good fit. And you can then, you know, um, determine that's what the research sheets are for. You can fill them out and then you can come and uh, book appointments with your guidance counselor and uh, discuss them. So, uh, and then that will help to crystallize uh, the process. And then when, it when you're ready to apply, you'll be more confident. So we encourage everyone to apply. The, can I apply to both college and university? Absolutely. If you have six grade 12 U or M courses, you're welcome to apply to both because you're eligible to apply to both. However, if you have only college level courses and your future intention is to at some point in time earn a degree, there are articulation agreements between colleges and universities where students can start off with a college diploma and then um, actually apply to university degree programs afterwards. So for example, uh, Seneca College has a liberal, Seneca College and some other colleges have a liberal arts program. And this particular program um, allows students to do two years social science um, and liberal arts in college, and then two additional years at a university that the um, that the college has a partnership with, and you will earn a degree in four years, just as if you had um, applied to a university directly. So there are options like that. And, you know, again, you can discuss these further with your guidance counselor. With regards to the same process for university, the university has a somewhat of a different process. We will have a university dialogue in which we will have nine university representatives come to our school on, uh, on November 21st. And then um, the U and M level classes period two will be invited. If there are any students here who are taking U or M level courses and have a period two spare, please come to guidance and pick up a uh, invitation. Um, or, and then they will set up in the front foyer and you can ask questions then. The college students can come and ask questions to the university representatives also regarding um, some partnership programs that colleges and universities may have, just so that they can sort of keep that in mind for the future if they decide to apply um, to degree programs later on. So we will have a universe, how to apply to university information session, uh, evening information session, just like this one on Wednesday, November 23rd. And again, that's only for students who have six grade 12 U or M courses on their timetable. And uh, it is, um, it's a different process than um, the, the college application. So we will be going over step by step how to apply. Students um, did receive their PIN number. So to apply to college, you didn't, the students do not require a personal identification number. They can go and set up an account uh, following the steps that Ms. Pavlik Triaz went over. Um, and again, like I mentioned, uh, this will be posted in our, in our northviewheights.ca under guidance post-secondary. So you can watch it again and see and um, follow it. But uh, for the university, uh, application system. Again, like I mentioned, that will be on the 23rd and a Google link, uh, sorry, a, a Zoom link will be sent to, to families uh, closer to the event. We have questions from, so a question from Jill Taylor-Smith, is it possible to apply to more than five programs? And Brianna is asking, when do I apply? So uh, for college, unfortunately, it's not possible to apply to more than five programs and college applications are open. So you can go ahead and apply um, at any time moving forward. Just remember the uh, application deadline of February the 1st. I don't know if Ms. Tanner Kulu, if you answered this one, iPhone meant, uh, had two questions, same process for university question. 
and difference between early application and regular application. So I think Mr. Oku did specify that it is a okay. different a different process. Um, in terms of the difference between early application and regular application, uh, we would encourage you to book a guidance appointment to talk to your guidance counselor. Um, this is a call it for a specific to how to apply to college session. Uh, we will be doing another one, as Ms. Taohu said, on how to apply to university, and we can answer uh, any questions related to applying to universities at that time. And the last question is from Marina, uh, so far anyways. Is there any universal search tool slash website that covers all university programs in GTA area instead of searching for individual university websites? So I think we've answered that question, but that one will be covered in our Ontario uh, University session on the 23rd of November. But if you go to Ontario University info CA, uh, that's where you can find all the programs and schools and what they offer. So you can start looking there or you can talk to your guidance counselor ahead of that session to start doing your research. We also have a research page for university student, like students that want to go to university that looks very similar to the OCAS research page. Are there any other questions at all? iPhone, I know you still have your hand up. I, if you'd like, I can lower it for you, but unless you have more questions. We hope that everyone has uh, started their research, um, but there is time if, you, if you're if you not sure and you're still thinking about it. Those conversations um, that you have with your guidance counselor are really important and it'll help to clarify sort of the decisions that you're making. So like, I had, like we had showed earlier in the presentation, uh, there is an appointment binder in the guidance office. So please, we will encourage all students to pop by and book an appointment and we can discuss things in further detail. And we do understand that you may have questions along the way. So please rest assured, know that we are at Northview every day. So um, students can have access to their guidance counselor on any given day if they have a question. As you're doing your research, one recommendation could be um, as you're doing your research, if you if you come across some questions, you might want to write it down because sometimes when students don't write it down, it's easy to forget the questions that the question that you were going to ask. So um, that's that's a little tip as well. And as Mr. Bruda had mentioned, those open houses are so so important. And the open house houses uh, site on our guidance Google Classroom is updated regularly as we get information. And you can even go to the, like, for example, if it's Seneca College, you can even Google Seneca College Open House, for example, and um, all the information will pop up. So there's a lot of colleges that are doing um, open houses now, like in the fall, they're fall open houses. And I think, that, I believe there will be some spring ones too. But again, for equal consideration, it is very important that you apply by the February 1st deadline. Other may be full earlier and you know exactly which programs you want to apply to and you apply earlier, you may receive acceptances before even the February 1st deadline. It just depends on the program and how they're deciding and how the admissions committee is deciding on rolling out the offers. I feel like that answered iPhone's recent question there, but how do we get info about virtual tours or orientation at college university? But I did post just now the open house um, Google Sheet that I am um, updating constantly, but if there's a college or a university that's not on that list, it might be that we just didn't get the promotional material just yet. So if you're, you know, you're like, where's that college? I know, I, I know there's a, that, that college exists. It's not on this. It's not on this open house page. Rest assured, if you just Googled it, go to the website. That's where you'll find on the program and the school itself all of those uh, virtual open houses or regular open houses that are in person. And uh, we do, like, like Ms. Sandra Coombs said, and like we all are saying. It's really important to get to the school itself because the actual vibe of the school is where you're going to feel if, if this is a, you know, a second home to you, right? Where you really feel at home and where you want to study. It's our pleasure to, to offer these information sessions. We feel that these, uh, we want to keep everybody informed and uh, we want equitable access to information, both for students and for parents and guardians. So we do hope, uh, we're very happy if you have found this information session to be useful. 
And again, we post everything so that, you know, if there is anything that you want to review from this session, um, you absolutely can. And we encourage everyone to take a look at our guidance site at northviewheights.ca. We do have some scholarship information. We have some mental health and wellness information and those in, those information uh, and uh, important dates information, all of that. But also we post a lot of really great things on our guidance Google Classroom as well. So please join if you haven't already. We do have the codes again um, outside of the guidance office and both inside the office. So join and um, again, we look forward to speaking to each and every one of you parents and guardians. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, email your, your child's guidance counselor. We do have the information available on northviewheights.ca guide and under guidance. So when you click on guide the guidance tab, there's a black menu tab. And then from there, if you click on guidance, you'll have all of our contact information there. So um, we look forward to connecting with everyone. I think at this point, uh, we will um, conclude our evening. Thank you everyone for joining us. And if you still have questions, please book a guidance appointment. That's why we're there. We get lonely in our offices without you guys. So just come on down, ask your questions and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening.